This podcast will cover movies and TV, sports, music and videos, food and beverages, travel, technology, games, and many other fun topics. I'm Dave, and this is my 17-minute podcast. In this episode, I'm going to rank 50 of the best college football rivalries. If you're a fan of college football, you probably have a favorite team, and you probably also have a favorite matchup for your team. Well, which ones are the best? I will rank them based on criteria I explain in a few moments. This was a challenging task, but I sure had fun. I ranked the matchups 50-1 to based on one loss record percentage, how many times they have played and when they first met, how many combined wins the schools have, not just against each other, and factored in historical significance, trophy names, and nicknames. All right, let's begin. Coming in at number 50, it's Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. Now, this is a rivalry that you might think should be ranked higher because they have combined for seven national championships, Oklahoma winning all seven. However, when you look at some of the other factors, most importantly, rivalry balance, they come in 50th because Oklahoma has won 80.1% of the games going 91, 20, and 7 against OSU. And that is why this rivalry comes in number 50. Number 49, Kentucky versus Tennessee. Now this matchup has good numbers all around as far as the date of the rivalry, number of games played, and even total combined wins. It is also the second oldest SEC rivalry. However, it is also unbalanced because Tennessee has won 74.2% of the games, coming in 49th, with a record of 83-26-9 against Kentucky. Number 48, the University of Washington versus Washington State. There are, of course, a lot of trophy games in all of these matchups, and the Huskies and the Cougars play every year for the Apple Cup. When you look at the date of the first game, the number of games played, and the total combined wins for all games between these schools, the numbers come in in the low to mid-30s for all those categories, and Washington has won 68.7% of the games. That's why this game comes in 48th. Number 47 is LSU versus Mississippi State. LSU's record against Mississippi State is 75 wins, 36 losses, and 3 ties, and that's why this is 47th. 46, Texas versus Texas A&M, and this is another lopsided series with the Longhorns winning two-thirds of the games. So while these matchups may be important to the coaches, players, and fans of each of these schools, they just don't have much balance, and that's why they are 50 through 46 in my rankings. At 45, it's Michigan versus Michigan State. Now this is another case where the rivalry balance is 45th, so it's pretty easy for me to rank this number 45. In fact, for matchups 50 through 41, I simply have them listed in order for the rivalry balance or imbalance as the case may be. At 44, it's Indiana versus Purdue, another in-state rivalry. Now some rivalries really surprise me. I never would have guessed that this is the 10th oldest rivalry and it's the 12th most games played. However, it's also 47th in combined wins for the schools, and then, of course, it's also 44th for balance, as Purdue has won 64% of the games. The teams play annually for the old Oaken Bucket Trophy, a trophy that's been around since 1925. Next, it's BYU versus Utah coming in at number 43. This rivalry is known as the Holy War, and as far as balance comes in 43rd. Number 42, Georgia versus Georgia Tech. This matchup has a moniker of clean, old-fashioned hate. Well, Georgia must be doing a lot more hating because they have won 63.5% of the games. The next matchup takes us out west. Number 41, it's Montana versus Montana State. This matchup comes in a very respectable 14th in number of games played. However, Montana has still dominated the rivalry and the winner receives the Great Divide Trophy. 40, Florida versus Florida State. Known as the Sunshine Showdown, this is a rivalry that I thought would rank much higher on the list. But when you look at the age of this matchup, it comes in 50th for the date of the first game. They first started playing in 1958 and 49th for number of games played, which is 67. The good news is we're starting to see much more balance in these matchups, as Florida's record against Florida State is 37-28-2, coming in at 29th for rivalry balance. Number 39 is the battle for Los Angeles, UCLA versus USC. They play for the victory bell and they come in 47th in first game played starting in 1929 and 44th in number of games played 93. 
they also have a combined 10 national championships. The one loss records are also getting more balanced, this one coming in 34th. The next matchup, it's Maine versus New Hampshire coming in at 38. They battle for the Bryce Cowell musket every year. New Hampshire has won 55.8% of the games. This one comes in at 25th for balance. Next, it's number 37, Ole Miss versus Mississippi State. They meet every year in a matchup called the Egg Bowl as they battle for the Golden Egg Trophy in an SEC battle. Coming in at 36, it's the University of Pittsburgh versus West Virginia. These teams first met in 1895 in what is known as the Backyard Brawl, and they have played 106 games through 2023. Another SEC matchup comes in at 35, it's LSU versus Ole Miss. Their matchup is called the Magnolia Bowl, and the teams have combined for five national championships, Ole Miss winning one and LSU winning four. Staying in the SEC for a 34th matchup, it's Alabama versus Tennessee. Now these two schools have combined to win 18 national championships with Alabama winning 16 and Tennessee 2. They also come in 6 when you look at total combined wins in all games played, not just against each other. If it's the third Saturday in October, you know it's Alabama versus Tennessee. Back out to the West Coast for number 33, Oregon versus Washington. This matchup is known as the Northwest Championship. The Ducks and Huskies have played 116 games against each other, ranking 30th overall, with Washington winning 63 of them. Number 32 is another one that surprised me. It's Colorado State versus Wyoming. Colorado State has won 59 of the 115 games these teams have played against each other, so this rivalry comes in 13th for balance. The downside is they come in second to last when you look at total combined wins in all games played for all these colleges. 31 is Kansas versus Kansas State in the Sunflower Showdown. The balance is pretty good in this series with Kansas winning 55% of the games coming in 18th overall and these schools come in 15th overall in number of games played with 121. Number 30 is Clemson versus South Carolina. These teams meet for the Palmetto Trophy. Pretty good numbers all around here when you look at the uh, date of the first game, number of games played, combined wins, national championships. The uh, only drawback is the one loss record as Clemson has won 30 more games than South Carolina. So this one comes in 40th as far as balance and 30th in my overall rankings. Now we have our first Ivy League matchup at number 29, it's Cornell versus Penn. This is a very old rivalry. It is the sixth most played rivalry at 129 games. The teams have combined for seven national championships. It would have ranked higher in the rankings, except Penn has dominated the series, winning 30 more games than Cornell. Coming in at 28, it's Baylor versus TCU in the Blue Bonnet battle. And this is our ninth most balanced rivalry as TCU has won 52.5% of the games going with a record of 59, 53, and seven against Baylor. Next, it's the Cornhuskers versus the Sooners coming in at number 27, Nebraska versus Oklahoma. This is one of the newer matchups as their first game wasn't played until 1912 and they have only met 88 times ranking 44th and 45th in those categories respectively. They have combined to win 12 national championships and they rank 4th when you combine their wins in all games, not just against each other. For balance it comes in 21st. Unfortunately they will not play again until a home and home series in 2029 and 2030 as the schools have changed conferences over the years. They used to play in the Big 8 that became the Big 12, and then Nebraska moved to the Big 10, and now Oklahoma is moving to the SEC. 26 is Grambling State versus Southern. At first glance, you'll notice that the first game played was 1932, so this matchup comes in 48th as far as the age of the rivalry. It also comes in 47th when you look at total number of games they have played against each other, and 50th, which is last, in total combined wins in all games for these two schools. And there are two reasons why this matchup comes in number 26 in my rankings. First, it's pretty balanced. Southern has won seven more games in the matchup, coming in at 16th for balance. And the biggest reason is that Eddie Robinson 
who coached at Grambling State, is the third winningest coach of all time in college football history. 25 is North Dakota versus North Dakota State, another in-state showdown. These teams play for the Nickel Trophy, and this matchup feels that it's exactly where it should be, right in the middle at 25, because as far as balance, it comes in 23rd, 22nd in age, 30th in games played, and 26th in total combined wins for the schools. On to the Big Ten for 24, Illinois versus Northwestern. Now, this is a matchup that I would not normally think of as being one of the best college football rivalries. When you look into the numbers, though, it totally makes sense why they should be number 24. This matchup is fourth in rivalry balance as Illinois has won two more games than Northwestern in the series, and they are the 13th oldest matchup, coming in at 26 in total games played and 42nd in total combined wins. We head back to the Dakotas for number 23. It's South Dakota versus South Dakota State. This is another matchup that caught me off guard. When you look at the numbers, this comes in at fifth for balance as South Dakota State has won three more games than South Dakota. It also comes in seventh as the oldest rivalry, and these teams play good football. Another Big Ten game at 22, it's Iowa versus Minnesota. There's a lot to talk about in this matchup. First thing we'll talk about is the trophy Floyd of Rosedale. This is the 10th oldest trophy game dating back to 1935. This traveling trophy is a 98 pound bronze hog statue. This is a fairly even matchup with Minnesota winning 54.7% of the games and it is the 10th oldest rivalry. What I want to talk about now though is something that really matters and that is a new tradition that started in 2017 at Iowa's Kinnick Stadium where everyone in the stadium turns to wave to the children going through treatment at the University of Iowa's Stead Family Children's Hospital. We'll watch a few short clips from Big Ten Network. The University of Iowa's Stead Family Children's Hospital opened in early 2017. The new hospital, it's really just divided from the stadium itself by one street. The 12th floor, realizing that it looked right down into this stadium, the appropriate name for it was the press box. And there was a lot of excitement that, gosh, this will be a great place to be on Saturday. The first time I saw a photo, it was just the back of a head. And it was looking down onto the field, and I thought, wow, they can see everything. I think with the new U of I Hospital Edition open, Kinnick should hold a wave to the kids' minute during every game. Can you imagine how neat it would be to have all those fans, players, and coaching staff looking up at you and sending a little extra inspiration? No score, Iowa, Wyoming, as we've reached the end of the period. As soon as I saw everyone standing up and getting to their feet, it, it was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> the people in the top row of the bleachers, you almost felt like you could reach out and, and they could hug you. <laughs> I had gotten my phone ready with hopes that, that I could get some some footage of somebody somewhere doing it. It's working. <laughs> I think I was just so shocked in the moment that it was actually working. These are a couple of photos I took when I attended the Iowa-Minnesota game in 2019, and I can attest all the fans, players, coaches, and officials waved. And of course, so did I. Number 21 is Oregon versus Oregon State, another in-state rivalry. They play for the Platypus Trophy every year. These teams have met 127 times, making it the ninth most played series. Number 20 is Florida State versus Miami. Quite a wide range of numbers to talk about here. First, these teams have combined for eight national championships. It is also the seventh most balanced series. Miami leads the series 35 wins to 33 for Florida State. They have also only met 68 times, ranking 43rd, and they first played in 1951, ranking 44th. 
so that's why this one comes in at number 20. Number 19 is the Notre Dame Fighting Irish versus the USC Trojans. There's a wide range of numbers to dig into on this matchup. First we'll talk about the age of the rivalry. It started in 1926 and they have played 94 times so it comes in toward the bottom of the rankings. However, they also have a combined 22 national championships and it's clearly the best cross-country rivalry because there really aren't any others. Also, Notre Dame has sent the most players drafted into the NFL and USC the second most. One of the best moments in college football history took place in 1977 when these teams met Notre Dame wearing the green jerseys. Southern California, defeating Missouri, Oregon State, Texas, Christian, Washington State, losing by a point in Alabama, beating Oregon last week for the record of 5-1, and one, ranked fourth in the nation. Now here comes the Trojan horse, and Notre Dame, for the first time, is coming out of the tunnel. You heard the reference about a green machine. Look at the jersey. That's Notre Dame football team for the first time wearing green. You talk about stretching emotion, looking for an asset, finding an advantage, whatever it takes. The players, when they went back to the locker room, were given the green shirt. And here they come. Listen to the crowd. and Notre Dame went on to win the 1977 National Championship. Number 18 is Harvard versus Princeton. A lot of these Ivy League matchups go back a long ways. This is actually the third oldest of all the rivalries starting in 1877. These teams have also combined for 23 national championships and Princeton has the edge in this matchup winning 55.2% of the games. Click the link in the description below for matchup 17 to one. I'm Dave, and this has been my 17-minute podcast.